putting my horn away at the very last night. And Bob Thiel walks up, you know, we're on stage up, up high and Bob Thiel walks in the, on the floor and looks up at me and says, Hey kid, you want to make a record for, for impulse? Oh man, it's such a brilliant story. I'll show you the rest of that in a second. That's Tom Scott, the amazing, iconic saxophone player, composer, session musician, blues brother. Uh, we did a session though with Sax School with Tom where he shared a whole bunch of great stuff. But one of the things he shared was about his rhythmic approach to saxophone. It's one of the things I love most about Tom's playing because he's got such a great feel. And he shared this really cool little exercise that I want to share with you today. So in a second, we're going to have a look at that little exercise. I've got a PDF for you. And if you're a Tom Scott geek like me, I've also got a solo transcription for you. I'll tell you a bit about that in a second. Right, let's get stuck in. First off though, if you don't know about Tom Scott, then here's what you need to know. So Tom has played on literally hundreds of amazing tracks that you will have been listening to your whole life. In fact, as well as a whole bunch of incredible solo albums and the iconic albums that he did with the LA Express, he's also recorded with a whole bunch of amazing artists, including Steely Dan, Joni Mitchell, Carol King, George Harrison, Wings, Jaco Pastorius, Beach Boys, Steppenwolf. He's even recorded with Olivia Newton-John. What an Aussie legend. Tom was an original member of the Blues Brothers Band. He wrote the theme for Starsky and Hutch. He even played on the theme song for Taxi Driver. Yeah, that too. He's even done scores for films, including Conquest for the Planet of the Apes, and won three Grammys. I mean, how does one person get so much done in their life? Now, I really love Tom's rhythm in his saxophone playing, and I just had to ask him about the iconic solo on So White and So Funky from the album Apple Juice. In fact, I did a transcription of it. Check this out. So there's two things that really amaze me about that solo. The first is the altissimo, which is just right. spot on, clear and in tune and just pops out effortless, beautiful. And the second thing is the rhythm. So I love the, I mean, it's, it's really in the pocket, but it's also quite complex. There's a lot of really interesting rhythms that happen in that very short solo. Fantastic. Thanks. <laughs> now, I know Tom studied tabla, Indian tabla, when he was younger, and I wanted to ask him if that was something that really influenced his approach to rhythm when he's playing on his saxophone. I, I, um, the answer to that, honestly, I think that the rhythm, Indian rhythm studies that I did and understanding that in order to learn some of these complex patterns, you start slowly and understand that, you know, this is if this is a quarter note, an eighth note is da, 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 a triplet is da 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 da, and a sixteenth is da 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 da. It's very very precise, and uh, in fact, here's here's one exercise we did, but which is between a simple one between um, four and three. It okay. goes like this: one, two, three; one, two, three, four; one, two, three, four; one, two, three; one, two. Three like that. Pretty cool, huh? Did you catch that? So what Tom's talking about is something called a polyrhythm. Let's have a look in a bit more detail. So this is what it looks like when it's written out. And basically, a polyrhythm is just a relationship between a group of three and a group of four. It could be any two numbers that don't line up, actually. But in this example, we're talking about three and four. Now, it's a bit tricky to understand when you see it written in music. But let's take a look at it this way. So the easiest way to get polyrhythms under your fingers is to think about subdividing the beats into 16th subdivisions. So what we're doing here is for each of the three pulses, we're breaking them down into four subdivisions of 16th notes or semiquavers. So that sounds like this. One, two, three. And in music, we count it by going one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, 
1e and uh, 2e and uh, 3e and uh, now for a group of three it's pretty easy because each of the notes lines up on the beat so we've just got one two three one e and two e and three for a group of four it's a different matter though because what we need to do is a bit of maths now we've got three groups of four subdivisions three times four is twelve so we've got twelve subdivisions in total so if we divide that amongst our four pulses we've got three subdivisions per pulse. You didn't think you'd be doing maths today, did you? So if we overlay that with our counting, what we end up with is 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a. So the first step now is to get familiar with where those pulses fall when we're doing the counting. So let's just count that really slowly. 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a Okay, so that's complicated enough, but if you want to take it to the final step and overlay the two rhythms, we're really going to need to use our metronome. So I'm using the Tonal Energy metronome, and it's got a really cool feature where you can put subdivisions in, and so I'm going to select 16th subdivisions in here. This is what it sounds like. I think we're going to need to slow that down, don't you? Okay, so let's start by clapping the group of three with our metronome. Two, three. 1e e and 2e uh, e and 3e uh, e and uh. okay so what about the group of 4 2e e and 3e uh, e. here we go 1e e and 2e uh, e and 3e uh, e and 1e uh, e and 2e uh, and 3e uh, e and now it takes a bit of practice but with time you can then overlay both of those rhythms together. Sometimes it's easier to do both rhythms with your hand where you do the group of three with one hand and the group of four with the other hand. So let's quickly try that. So metronome back on and here we go. One and uh, two e and uh, three e and one e and a uh, two e and a uh, three e and a uh, one e and a uh, two e and a uh, three e. 1e e and a uh, 2e and a uh, 3e and a uh. Okay, so that's a pretty complicated rhythm and you're probably thinking, Nigel, why on earth are you bothering to teach me this? I'll never use this while I'm improvising. But the thing is, understanding your rhythm and getting really comfortable with those sorts of difficult patterns will help you to have a better relationship with rhythm and it'll help you to be overall a lot more rhythmical in your playing. In fact, getting back to the solo that I played a minute ago, when I was speaking to Tom on this masterclass, I was saying to him how his use of rhythm in that solo is incredible. And when you look at the transcription, which is available on the link down below, you'll see that there's all sorts of different rhythms going in there. When I transcribe them, they seem almost counterintuitive. But when I put them together and played them, they worked and sounded fantastic. And I was asking Tom, how do you get to have such a great sense of rhythm in your playing? By that point, uh, a lot of it, I'm just, I'm just going on instinct, you know, uh, and, but I've got this, the thing is I've got this backlog of study and stuff. This is, you know, this is the way you learn jazz. You don't start playing like Coltrane. You know, you, you first learn some scales and, and, and some phrases. I mean, I listened, I learned jazz largely by just listening to the people I liked and copying them, literally copying them a phrase here and there, you know, that I liked. So, you know, just like learning a language, man, you start with notes, then phrases, then sentences, then paragraphs, you know, then a whole song. I mean, uh, it's a process. And by the time I was playing that solo, I had a few, I had a few chapters under my belt. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Oh man, that whole session was just amazing. And Tom goes on to share loads of stories about some of the classic recordings that he did. We talked a lot about how Tom creates character in his sound, which I think is an important topic, and he's got some interesting things to say about that. We also cover his approach to transcribing and altissimo. 
his stories about the Blues Brothers, it's absolutely amazing. So that whole masterclass and the entire back catalogue of all the other amazing masterclasses that we've done are all available for you inside SAC School in the members area if you are a member. Um, of course, along with your tutor support and your community access and all the other goodies that come with being a SAC School member. So if you're not a member, go check it out. There's a link down below where you can get 14 days free access to explore. So I wanted to just get back to that story that I promised you at the start where Tom's talking about how how he got started and got his first big break with Impulse Records. This story just blew my mind. I wanted to ask you, looking back at all the albums that you've made, you started really young. Like, you must have been in your teens when you made your first album. I, I made my first solo record. Well, I appeared with Oliver Nelson. That's how his big band. That's how I got asked by Bob Thiel, the you know, the producer and creator of Impulse Records, which of course, you know, John Cole, I mean, they... Oh yeah, that's Bob Thiel who ran Impulse Records when they were recording John Coltrane, Mingus, Duke Ellington, Sonny Rollins. He brought out the track, What a Wonderful World. That guy. That was at the time one of the hippest jazz labels, if not the hippest. They had, oh, they had wow. great covers, you know, records, you know, remember records with covers. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and like great liner notes and great, um, just great music by Coltrane and Eric Dolphy and Mingus and Oliver Nelson and on and on, you know. So when I finished this two week live gig with Oliver in, uh, it, it's actually, it's been documented on a record called Live in Los Angeles with the Oliver Nelson Big Band. After it was over, Bob Thiel, I'm putting my horn away at the very last night and Bob Thiel walks up, you know, we're on stage up, up high and Bob Thiel walks in the, on the floor and looks up at me and says, Hey kid, you want to make a record for, for impulse? And I, I'm like, I'm like, you're uh, talking to me? Uh, yes, Mr. Thiel, I'd love to. Oh man, that's such a great story. It's kind of like the dream scenario for every musician, right? The, the top record producer asks you to come and make an album just like that and 21 years old mega hey i hope you enjoyed this little sneak preview into that masterclass with tom scott what a great session and if you do want to find out more about it um, then consider joining sax school grab the 14 day trial at least come and have a look around we'd love to show you around and help you with your playing and also if you enjoy videos like this consider subscribing to the channel because i'm uh, putting out more videos all the time and you know i don't really want you to miss any of them so have fun exploring the other lessons but most importantly have fun playing your saxophone i'll catch you next time